Ah, Eunice. Hello, <laughs> Shallow. Uh, just a reminder, if you have a question for Mr. Nancy, there we go. Brianna, go ahead. Hello, I hope you're enjoying California. Oh, oh yeah. I the better or worse, the better or worse in Florida. Uh, I would say the we have a nice view here, so I cannot complain. I like it. I'll let you know what I think, but um, <laughs> but um, I do want to I do want to ask you. You're in the second leg now. What are what is the difference, and how does the intensity rise in the second leg compared to the first leg? Yeah, really good intensity. Uh, I'm really pleased with the with the way we walk. Uh, we are ahead. And at the same time, we have to be uh, aware that everything can happen because uh, uh, we they work really well. You know, uh, as you know, we have um, um, one week less uh, compared to, uh, to to last year, but uh, we are on the right track in terms of uh, intensity, in terms of volume, also. So, uh, so we were able to do what we wanted to do uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, minutes played for the players the last two games, and uh, and now this is more about um, uh, really the concepts you know offensively and defensively uh, and uh, the evolution. So about what we want to do. So uh, so I like to, this is a challenge time for the moment because uh, um, I'm they are able to do good things, but now the idea is to. Uh, is to add certain things, and uh, and but I'm really pleased with the ways I've been uh, so far. How does your expectation rise as the intensity is rising? You're seeing they're able to keep up. Do your expectations and what they're producing and doing in training rise as well? Yes, uh, all the time. You know, we have a standard of performance, and for us, the standard of performance is a uh, win the day. Win the day for us is to to uh, to uh, to work as the best as we can. And uh, and this is something that hasn't changed, but uh, they do it well now. Uh, the job with my staff and I is um, all the time when the player is able to uh, to reach the challenge that I give him. The idea is to give him another things, you know. So all the time we want to uh, to add layers, and this is uh, how they're going to be able to uh, to grow uh, as a as a player also. So, but I'm I'm pleased so far with the way they uh, responded, knowing that. Um, it hasn't been uh, uh, easy for them because uh, last year was uh, last year last week sorry was a, a really hard week uh, in terms of uh, fitness wise but also tactically and uh, a lot of informations but um, they, they did a, a good week and uh, this week also I'm, I'm pretty happy and I know you're you're not one coach a coach who usually singles out players but as a whole do you feel like the players have every challenge you've given them they've been able to rise to and are you happy that you have to give them more and more challenges? Uh, yes, and I'm happy also to help them to go back on track because, you know, they're all uh, human beings. And sometimes as you as human being, you can enjoy your comfort zone. So so the idea is uh, all the time uh, uh, to uh, to be at the edge of uh, this comfort zone, you know, so uh, to get out of this comfort zone. So for me, um, it's challenging also because... Uh, uh, I demand uh, more about uh, what uh, what I want. So, uh, but again, this is the purpose of uh, my job. So, uh, I'm happy with that. And do you feel like you demand more, especially the guys who've been there with you day one, compared to the newer guys or even some of the guys who came mid season last year? Yes, uh, the the group is really good to um, to uh, empower the new players. And uh, and I'm really happy about uh, about what they did and what they are doing. Um, now um, um, the idea is all about uh, um, structure, but within the structure we need discipline, and uh, and the, this discipline is going to help us to to uh, to be more creative, uh, to innovate a little bit more. And this is the focus that uh, I, I want for my player to be able to. Uh, to put a little bit more doubt on the opposition, to add more tools uh, uh, offensively, but also defensively. So this is the idea. Thank you. Thanks, Brianna. Tyler, go ahead. Uh, Coach, last year uh, we saw 
uh, at times during games, you would take off uh, Matan and bring on Christian. as kind of like a, a changing the profile type thing, like you like to mention. Do you see that kind of going into the season as a position battle between those two? And what would that look like? No, it won't be uh, between those two. He won't. He's going to be between the, all the five offensive players that are. So, uh, again, the idea is uh, last year was last year. You know, sometimes when I take decisions, obviously, you don't know all the tools, but uh, this is not, uh, it, it could be, the, my decision could be uh, regarding the the chemistry, regarding the, the interaction between few players. But after that, I can have a decision also about the profit, the profile, really the profile. And sometimes it could be about uh, 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 the mental aspect. So it depends. There is a lot of things that um, I'm going to have to, to see and adjust. So the idea is um, we have, a, we have a few forwards with a different profile. And, uh, and we have Christian, we have Jason, we have uh, Mati, we have Marino also who can play in this position. So, uh, no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend about uh, the profile of the opposition. What caught your eye with wanting to give Taha a first-team contract? What was it about him that really stood out and say, hey, I think this this young man could, could fit well in the system? Um, I would say a young, modern number eight. Uh, you know, it's a box-to-box -box player and uh, technically, obviously, he has quality, but he's able also, you know, to, to play between the lines, but also to ask the ball behind the line. And, um, and he's, uh, he, he's young, but he has uh, a lot of personality. And, and for me, personality is really uh, important because at the same level, I, th I believe that the player who's going to have more personality is going to be able to go uh, 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 in front of the other one. So so again, he, we had, uh, he, he played the, the last two games that we that we had. Uh, it was interesting to see him against uh, Toronto because uh, the intensity was uh, was uh, higher. And uh, so he had uh, good moments and uh, he didn't have bad moments. He had only moments that he can learn. And for me, this is the most important. So so we'll see. But He's been uh, he's been okay and he's been uh, he, he had uh, highs and lows. It's normal, but uh, I, I like I like his profile for sure. And the last one for me, you have a couple players, including Taha, such as Ada Moore, Sean Zawaski, just to name a few, who have gone through that player pathway of academy, uh, crew two, and first team. Can you talk about just how important that is as the club in general? A lot of see yeah. it as probably the the blueprint. Of being successful, yes, is is uh, that's why I'm here in this club. That's why I work for this club because um, I, I was really happy to see uh, 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 an atheism a bit when I saw uh, Sean, uh, you know, with the extension of the contract because uh, because again, this is uh, this is you 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 buy time when you have a players from uh, his city and uh, he, he went uh, through the academy. And after that, he's a professional player. And uh, we don't have to tell him to uh, this desire to compete and so on. This is something that he has that naturally. And, uh, and for me, play, uh, all the players who come from the academy are really, really important. Because I believe that as a coach, the type of coach I am, uh, it's essential for me because um, I'm going to be able to teach them something else and not about try to uh, compete and compete and compete. And also, this is good also for the for the club because uh, obviously, uh, hopefully they're going to be able to to be consistent and uh, we never know. I hope that they're going to do uh, 10 years in the club, but maybe they're going to be sell and because this is a reality. And uh, and again, I think that uh, it's, this is an important point also. I'm not saying that we're going to sell them. I'm saying that when we have the luxury to have... Uh, 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 possibility to develop players through the academy. This is amazing. This is amazing. And this is something that is really, really important for me and obviously for the club. And that's why I'm here. Thank you, Tyler. Um, Gerald, do you want to close this out? Unless anyone has um, any questions after Mr. Lucas. Coach, you talk about pushing the players to the edge of their comfort zone. Uh, you said it last year, and uh, you talked about how you do that by having different players 
playing different positions that they normally don't do. Has Is that something that you've done this year so far in preseason? And if so, who have you tried in different positions? Um, I would say uh, this year, during the preseason, no, I, I didn't do it because all the players who were playing in a different position, this is the same, I would say. Only uh, Jordan Knight, the, the the young guy, you know, he usually plays as a wing back. Uh, for the moment, he plays as a center back. I want to see him in this position. But uh, no, for me, uh, this is more about, you know, the, 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 the do things on the pitch that uh, uh, they don't see quickly. You know, so I'm going to give you an example. So we are really good to attract the opposition, but sometimes we don't have to attract the opposition. Sometimes we could put a ball in behind. And this is all these kind of things that I want to challenge them because we the first camp was about uh, the closest distance with the players, how we, uh, we get the shape around the ball and so on. And now I want them to see also that why we are trying to manipulate the opposition, is it possible also to see far? and to play far if we need to. And they are not comfortable with that because it's difficult for them in terms of uh, try to look far to see close. And uh, is it is, do we have a possibility to, to play in behind or in between instead of playing close? So this is all this kind of thing that uh, uh, they, as they have to get out of their comfort zone. And also we do a kind of rotation uh, on the pitch the way we play. After that, we need also to get the right structure when you rotate, sometimes it could be disorganized, but the idea is to be organized at the same time. And this is not easy. So this is this type of, of, of exercise and example that, for me, this is challenging for them. And you just had a preseason game against Toronto. Um, and you talked about last year, you know, when you're doing like some of the adjustments during the game and making some of your subs and uh, formations, you liked it to the point of view of a go to a party, mm -hmm. right? You know, <laughs> somebody might have a, you know, one point of view, but you have a different one. Having that preseason against Toronto, is there something that you saw in the point of view of that, you know, you liked and what you didn't like? Uh, no, it was a really good game. A really good game for us because uh, we, uh, obviously, we mixed the team and, um, and um, I needed a kind of game like this to see how we're going to react when it's going to be intense. And um, it's been uh, it's been uh, really good to see uh, how we reacted, but also what we didn't do. And today we have a meeting to, to show them uh, that we are the same team, but the opposite team, they're going to do the same as they did last year, try to congest the middle, to block the middle. and uh, But we need more discipline. And uh, it was a good wake-up call in a positive way to go back on discipline. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I, I didn't say that my team was all over the place. No, we did good things, but we could have been better. The, we did a two, uh, two, um, two game over 60 minutes and uh, we could have been better. But for me, it was really good to see that because I used... Uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, I use this situation to show the player what we need to get back to. And for me, it was really good. And we talked to Jason earlier, and he talked about one of the things that he wanted to work on was his composure, you know, not around the, the goal, but outside of the box with the, with the ball. Can you talk about the progression that he has shown, you know, as far as working on his composure and yeah, his discipline? He, he, he scored, uh, I think, one or two goals. I think I don't remember. But one of the goals that he scored was Jason style. You know, a composure in front of the net uh, at the edge of the 18. Uh, he didn't try to destroy the ball. He placed it with a left foot. So this is Jason. Now the idea for him, the challenge for him is to get back, to uh, get better, back to goal with a lot of pressure. And, uh, and um, he has the quality to do it but he has to believe in himself a little bit more. So this is something that we work with because to be available between the lines and also uh, behind the line, it's been, it's been really interesting. And I have to say that he had a really good off season and he came back fit. And uh, this is something that he struggled with uh, last year, 
So good for him. I'm happy to see that because he knows that this year is going to be uh, really important for him. So he has all this kind of thing that he has to work with, but uh, he did also a good stuff uh, last year. And last one for me, you got Steven Marrera back. You know, how, you know, how's it been to being able to transition him you know, from the national team back, you know, back to crew and being around some of the new players? Yeah, he, he, you know, that's why I love my job because um, he was supposed to come back earlier. But um, but when I discussed with him and I watched the game, obviously, because this is also my country, the country that he played with. So he um, he was tired emotionally really tired. So the idea was to give him more days off. And uh, and uh, hopefully he's going to be back tomorrow. And um, we are happy to uh, to see him back because uh, uh, he's important for us as a player, but also uh, as, a, as a person within the group. But now we're going to have to be good also because um, he didn't have a lot of uh, uh, holidays and uh, he traveled a lot. Uh, he had uh, really good games with his national team, and it was the weather was so hot. So this is something that we have to take uh, that we have to take in consideration. So that's why we're gonna go slowly with him, and uh, and the idea is to uh, help him to go back uh, on track and uh, to do uh, to be better as last year. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Thanks, Gerald. Brianna, do you want to close us out? Yeah, two more quick things. First, you said uh, yeah. Stephen was playing for your country. How much pride did you feel watching that, seeing a player that you coach have that much success for that team? No, I'm happy because this is the, the country of my mother. And, you know, this is a small country and uh, and uh, they are really good players. And um, so I was happy to see uh, uh, that he had uh, an influence, you know, uh, in, uh, in the team, the way we play. So he, he tried to uh, to to uh, to add certain things that we do uh, in our team, and um, no, he did. Uh, he told me that um, it was not easy because uh, the weather was so hot, but uh, at the same time uh, they, they, they had really difficult game. So, but I was pleased. I was I was pleased to watch him on TV, and uh, I wanted to be only the fan, but it was difficult for me. So uh, I did both. Sometimes I was a, I was a fan, and sometimes I was a coach. But uh, but no, I'm happy for him. But I'm sad also because. That could have been true, true, you know, and um, that's why football sometimes is uh, is not easy because uh, they deserve to to go through, but they didn't do it, and uh, that's why it was uh, it was difficult for him and for the for the team. But um, but uh, no, he he's gonna come back tomorrow, and uh, we're happy. And the last thing I want to ask is, uh, is Jaden? I know he who you guys drafted. He's at camp with you guys right now, correct? Uh, yes, we have Jaden, and we have also a, a young. Uh, uh, forward uh, Chase, uh, uh, U15, uh, 15 years old, and um, really interesting also. So yes, so Jaden is with us and uh, and Chase also. And what have you been just seeing from Jaden and how he's been um, adjusting and everything? No, he's, he's been, I have, to be, I have to be honest, it's been difficult for him because, uh, you know, uh, player coming from the university, uh, they need time to adapt. And the way we train, uh, uh, there is a, this is not long session, this is short session, really intense. So he had uh, difficult moments, but we it's normal, uh, like uh, Derek also, uh, because this is not the same. But uh, no, he, he, he adapted uh, 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 in a certain way. And the idea is to, uh, it's a project, is to give him time to understand what we want to do. and. Uh, and also let him express himself the way he plays. But um, it is time. And uh, just one last thing. Are you expecting him to be with the team throughout the whole season? I know it's the, there was some can choose to go back to college and everything. So are you expecting to have him throughout the whole season? No, I will see at the end of the preseason. Uh, for the moment, we still uh, we are still in preseason. So, so we'll see a bit uh, what we're going to do. But uh, uh, we're going to decide a little bit later. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. I think that'll conclude our virtual media availability for the day. Um, thanks, everyone, for the time. Thanks, Coach. Bye-bye. Thanks, Coach.